Today I'm going to do Taylor Swift's natal shard, and one of you had requested her shard a little earlier ago, so I'm going to do it today. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so Taylor Swift is a Sagittarius. She's a 21 degree Sagittarius, and her son falls in her 12th house. And Taylor Swift enjoys being alone. Okay, she she she's very comfortable being alone. Anybody that has son in 12 could signify a loner. Okay. And 12th house also has to do with music. And she also has here uh, Uranus uh, four degrees in Capricorn in her fourth, sorry, in her 12th house. So it signifies that Taylor Swift has the genius Uranus in the 12th house of music and of the subconscious. So it's safe to say this is where she gets her songwriting abilities. And, you know, Uranus has a negative and it also has a positive anywhere, just like any other uh, planet in the zodiac. So here, positively, this is where she gets her songwriting abilities in the subconscious and with the sun here in the 12th house shining. Now, Taylor Swift has Capricorn rising. She's got Capricorn rising seven degrees. And we also have here Mercury conjuncting her rising sign, her ascendant, and it's eight degrees. So she is very much ruled by Mercury. She channels Mercury very well throughout her whole life with songwriting, speaking, and singing. Okay? And Mercury plays a very big role in her chart as it's in her ascendant. And Capricorn is the sign of music as well as Pisces in the 12th house. Capricorn rules music. Okay? I don't know if you guys have ever seen the movie uh, Pan's Libby Rings. And it has to do with the god Pan, where she has two little horns, and he's uh, Baphomet. He rules music, okay? And she also has here, in the first house, she also has Neptune, which also rules music, art, drama, composition, uh, dancing, anything that has to do with expressing yourself cre creatively, well, it rules Neptune, okay? And she also has here... 13 degrees Saturn next to her Neptune. It's like a little conjunction. It's very in close proximity. Saturn in the first house could signify that the individual has a very, very hard life, but the individual strives to have structure and structure their self, improve themselves, discipline themselves very strictly throughout their whole life. That's true. I have Saturn in the first house. And being a songwriter, it's very beneficial to have Saturn. You know, in, at, at least in the first house of Mercury. Because Saturn structures anything. And when you're writing music, you have to structure things. So for her, she's very, very disciplined in her life. Very serious. And she's so serious that she won't even put her relationship out there, which I think is a great idea. You know, she doesn't really expose her relationship to other people. She keeps her, you know, uh, love relationships very private. And I totally, totally... Uh, applaud her for doing that. So she's a very serious person as she has Saturn here in the first house. Any planets that you have in the first house, they dictate your whole shard, they dictate your whole personality very strongly, especially the closer they are to your ascendant, which Mercury is the closest one. Okay. Um, she has Venus also in her first house in one degree Aquarius. And to make her a very beautiful person, a very physically gorgeous girl, okay, which she is. Now, she's got the north node uh, in the second house, 19 degrees in Aquarius, which means this is where she's heading in life. This is where she uh, aims to in her life. And second house has to do with value, okay, with what you value in life, money, uh, stability, because second house is ruled by Taurus. So she aims towards perhaps having a very stable life, perhaps uh, stabilizing herself, perhaps being grounded, and always having a, an abundance of cash, uh, an abundance of things. And she's not into drama. She likes stability. She doesn't want to have gossip around. She doesn't want to have uh, sudden stuff happening all of a sudden. She doesn't like that. She wants to have her, her things straight, and that's why she's got the north node in the second house. Okay, that's where she aims to. She's a very down-to-earth girl, 
very stable. You don't really hear, you know, uh, much about her, really. Now, she's got here the moon in Cancer in very close proximity to Jupiter. Now, I did a chart yesterday that had the same uh, placement, but not in the same house, but, you know, had Jupiter and, and, and the moon together. And she comes across as a very friendly person. When you have the moon and you have uh, Jupiter very in very close proximity, it signifies that you come across as a very good, humored, friendly individual. And she's very comfortable at work, okay? Sixth house has to do with work, health, routine. And she's very comfortable following a certain routine. She can easily come out of balance if someone disrupts her routine, which is very important that she keeps a certain routine. Also, a Jupiter in the sixth house would signify that she's very blessed with her health, okay? Now, although, however, we have Uranus here kind of semi-opposing Jupiter, which could also signify like a little bit of a hidden illness, but overall, having Jupiter in the sixth house to signify, you know, really good uh, standing health, okay? Now, Taylor Swift has 26 degrees of Scorpio, um, Mars in the 11th house of society, friends, and uh, social networks. So she puts a lot of energy here. Okay, She puts a lot of energy to the fame area. And yeah, the 10th house is fame and reputation. But the 6th house has to do with a social media and fame, like how they're intertwined. So she puts a lot of effort into being found into being out there okay she also has pluto here 16 degrees in scorpio and she needs to be in control here this is where she has her power in social media okay and uh she has pluto semi-squaring her saturn here 13 degrees in in aquarius so her persona even gets channeled through her social media as being very serious again okay and you can see it in her face she's very capricorn like you know, or like her facial expressions is always like a very serious girl. Although she, yeah, she is Sagittarius, freedom loving, you know, easygoing girl. But generally, I would say this whole chart really talks about the theme of this whole chart. And every chart has a theme. Every every person has a theme in their chart. And for me, this chart points out a very low key girl that's extremely talented with you know with lyrics and and wording and poetry. And she wants to remain that way. You know, she, yeah, she wants to be out there, you know, in the world and be seen for her talent and stuff. But, yeah, she wants to remain hidden and have her privacy. Okay, that's, like, very, very important to her. And, yeah, status is very important to her because she is, she is naturally a Capricorn ascendant. Capricorn likes to reach high grounds. Capricorn likes to climb the mountain and be up there and be recognized. And she loves that. She needs that. You know, that's, that's a very much of an important thing for her. But, yeah, she really needs, you know, her privacy. So, for me, this is a low-key, low-key chart. We also have here that the moon and Jupiter is in the sign of Cancer. And Cancer is a very placid sign, very moody, very sentimental and sensitive. That's another reason why I would see that she just wants to be low-key. She doesn't want to be bothered. And also having the moon here in Cancer, and she, she just she comes out as sweet. And Jupiter and the moon here, she comes out as super sweet, super girl next door kind of you know person that you won't expect anything dramatic out of her. Okay, so yeah, this is the chart for Taylor Swift. I hope you guys enjoyed this chart reading. And if you guys want a chart reading, go to the description below because I have all the information there. And I hope to see you soon, guys. Namaste. Hey guys, check out my music channel where I write my own music, sing and play piano. Make sure to subscribe. Oh.